All right, hello, and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel, and today we're going to be doing a deep dive technical analysis for the week ahead. Just before we get into that, I want to answer a quick question because I know a lot of people have this question at the moment. And the question is if Bitcoin and gold are the correct assets to hold during periods of high inflation or hyperinflation, why are they not going up in a straight line? Why have we got such volatility? A lot of people think. Bitcoin and gold are broken. I've heard so many people say this, oh, they've failed as inflation hedges, so on and so forth. Um, I'm going to show you why. Everybody wants the charts of gold and Bitcoin, if you hold them at least, if you're not sure, if, you don't, if you're not uneducated. If you know what these assets are, then you, you want the chart to look like this. Even steeper than this would be nice, wouldn't it? And looking at the charts for gold and Bitcoin, it's easy to say, well, they don't work. They, they don't look like that. But I can tell you now, at the end of the decade, the charts are going to look like this once they're smoothed out. And any volatility now, whilst it seems like the shape is nowhere near this parabolic curve, I can I can tell you that once we've smoothed out the noise, both the charts are going to look like this at the end of the decade. If anything, they're going to be a lot steeper. And I'm going to prove that to you now. The black line in this chart is the gold price in Weimar marks, starting from 1914 up to just gone 1923. If you just look at the black line here, you can see that the chart does basically look like a parabola. Okay, it looks very smooth. It's all very smoothed out. This is the chart that people expect. This is the chart people want for gold and Bitcoin. But if you take a look at the red line, the percentage change in the gold price per month, right, every month, you can see that this was one of the bumpiest run-ups. You can imagine, if you were trading on leverage here, any of these giant swings up and down, you would have been a billionaire on the way up and completely bankrupt on the way down. Anyone with leverage trading this got absolutely wrecked every month but people that just hold get the black line okay people that just accumulate and be patient and don't look at the volatility and don't care about the noise understand what they hold know what they hold get a relatively smoothed out long-term parabolic curve that they get to enjoy the benefits of there's no shot that the gold and the bitcoin charts do not look like this black line or this parabola over time there's no shot that they, they don't look like that. They absolutely are both going to look like that. But make no mistake, this volatility in the red line is going to be even more severe for people that hold Bitcoin over this decade. Even more severe, both to the upside and to the downside. This is to be expected for gold, but Bitcoin is a 90 vol asset. 90 vol. It is going to be beyond anything the planet has ever seen. So if you're not prepared for this volatility, you're going to get shaken out and you're not going to get to enjoy what will be a long term smoothed out parabolic curve like this. Anyway, talking of parabolas, that leads me nicely into the technical analysis for today. I just thought to myself, doesn't this look exactly like the dollar? So let me show you the dollar. This is the weekly chart. We have a lead into a first base lead into a first base, a rise into a second, a rise into a third, a rise into a second, a rise into a third, a rise into a fourth, a rise into a fourth, and then this big extension towards the top of the curve, which I think is where we are now. So does this mean we're coming to the end of this curve? Well, according to this, it does. But of course, that doesn't mean that we're at the top yet. Yeah, this doesn't have to be the absolute top. And we could form a base and emerge from that base just like we've done prior. Just because this schematic shows four bases. I have seen five, I have seen six, and I've even seen seven before. So that is not to say that the dollar is imminently about to collapse, although I don't think it has much more legs in it. The problem with the dollar at the moment is, of course, if you've seen the Dixie explanation video that I did before, this isn't just the USD strength. This is the dollar strength against a basket of other currencies like the euro, so on and so forth. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a card in the top right of that now. Go and watch that, understand what this really means. But I do think we're getting very close to violating this curve. I do think that we are going to stall out here. We could definitely go higher. We could. I'm not going to pretend to know where the top is. But I can tell you what will trigger the top. And what will trigger the top is a pivot for policy. When the Fed decides to pivot, when the Fed decides that it's tamed inflation or it's got inflation under control or the economy crashes sufficiently that it can't sustain any more downside, the Fed will pivot. It will happen in the next couple of months. I'm convinced of that. I've been saying this time and time again. And that is what will trigger the violation of both this parabola and 
this long-term resistance line. The, the major point here to understand is the Fed has to decide. Does it want people unable to afford food due to high inflation? Or does it want people to be unable to afford food to, due to economic collapse and job losses? The inflation route at least allows them to kick the can a little ways further. And also, it will cause less civil unrest. If, every, if the economy collapses and everyone loses their jobs and all of this, then people will be burning down the cities and demanding that people do stuff and, you know, riots and all of that craziness. If they just stop pretending to want to fight inflation and let inflation run rampant and prop markets up in the short term investors are happy markets go up and really people don't understand what inflation is your average person you know if you're watching this channel consider yourself incredibly lucky if you know what inflation is and you understand it consider yourself incredibly lucky because most people they have no idea that inflation is caused by monetary expansion they have no idea the long-term effects it has and will make people poor they have absolutely no idea they, you know, a lot of people think the prices go up because corporations are greedy. They have no idea it's to do with the monetary expansion, let alone what assets to hold and how to benefit from this and how to store wealth and protect value. They have absolutely no idea. So they can get away with this inflation. And don't get it twisted. The Fed wants inflation. The Fed wants it. You know, they can stand there and pretend they want to tame inflation. They can stand there and pretend that they want to curb it and they want to raise interest rates and they're hell bent on running the balance sheet off and all of this stuff. They can blame it on invasions, they can blame it on pandemics and outbreaks. But at the end of the day, they want inflation. Why? Because they've got 30 trillion of debt that they can't service without enormous inflation. And also because they want to impoverish people. They want to impoverish people so that they can force them to accept central bank digital currencies. It's not just me that thinks this. Okay, here's a tweet from Peter Schiff. In April, CPI rose more than expected at 0.3% with a core spike in 0.6%. Stocks and bonds are selling off as investors realise the Fed must fight harder to, def to defeat inflation. What they don't realise, get ready, this is what I'm talking about. What they don't realise is that inflation has already won and the Fed will soon stop pretending to fight it. Pretending to fight it. The Fed wants inflation. It's not just me that thinks this, it's not just me that's been saying this all along. Okay? They are pretending not to want inflation. They want inflation and they need inflation. They need it because of their debt and they want it because they want to be able to make people beg for central bank digital currencies. Okay? If you haven't seen this video, the Fed is about to pivot. This is why I'm so certain. People think it's, oh, the Fed, you know, they're not going to do this. They're going to keep hiking rates. The Fed is talking nonsense. They're talking nonsense. And people don't understand this because they think the Fed isn't lying to their face. The Fed told everyone that inflation was transitory. Do you remember that? And 70 odd percent of the market participants believed them. Believed them. How can you, how can you trust this person? How can you trust this organization, this cartel, this mafia, this criminal organization? They're about to pivot and I'm so certain of this. The reason I know I'm right, the reason I have no problem making a YouTube channel and putting my reputation online for this is because I know they want inflation. I know they need it, okay? So make no mistake, it is not just me, okay? They are pretending to want to fight inflation. Inflation is guaranteed. Of course, when that happens, we can expect enormous rallies from risk on markets and also a collapse in dollar will send gold silver bitcoin and alike to new all-time highs so let's take a look at the s p we've got a swing low there's a long opportunity here something like this a little bit below that and uh and up the problem i have with this entry is it's likely going to stall out at the this this first trend line um so but this is a short-term trade opportunity for one Okay, and if this is going to be a long, if the long is going to work out, then it should be going nowhere near the recent swing low, which means if the price were to roll over and stop you out, you can immediately switch short because we know we're going much lower. So there's nice, there's a nice trade idea there for one. There's also another trade idea is waiting to get a touch of this line here. So I think the price is going to come up somewhere around here and it's likely going to touch this first uh, resistance line, this first line of the downtrend. As it does, there's another two very clear setups here. You've got a touch of this trend line and a rejection to go short, something that would look like this. So if we can, so if we can touch this trend line but can't convincingly close above it and, uh, and resume or preferably flip it into support and go, then we've got a nice short opportunity here very easy short opportunity 
if that doesn't work out, there's another nice idea here is that if we touch this trend line and then break out, retest and go, or just break out, there's another trade right here to take this here. Something to be aware of with this trade is we're likely similarly from here to here, we're likely going to get hung up on this top line. So if we break this, we have to be really, really aware that we might get rejected at this blue line. So for US equities, we have multiple long setups here. We've got this one using this as the swing low and your stop loss down here, being careful that here and here are both likely going to act as resistance. If they do act as resistance and get strongly rejected, I'm going to close the long position and flip short to take the trade back down. Because if the either of these lines act as major resistance, then new lows are on the table. If, however, we can break straight through these, if I take the trade down here to here and we break through, then I will add to my position and move the stop loss for the whole lot up, whilst we then repeat this process to this trend line. Then, of course, at this trend line, it's the same thing. If we get rejected, we flip short, stop above here, and look for new lows. If we make it through this trend line, then again, we move the stop loss from the prior two trades up. We have a whole stop for everything here, roughly somewhere in this neighborhood, and we look to take the long to new highs. Now, I know that if you're new to trading, if you're not familiar with trading, if you're not familiar with adding risk and building a position like i just said and moving your stop losses up to account for this don't worry i'm going to show you how i play this in real time every day that's necessary to post or update on this trade i will as of monday morning i'm going to be looking to take a long setup the first setup something like this okay knowing that when we get here we're going to get into trouble and have to be open to flipping so for now that's all you need to know that my plan is Okay, if you're new to trading, if you're experienced at trading, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Then when we get to here, I will update on the market. I'll say, oh, we made it here and I'm going to either add to my sh add to my long position here, move the whole stop up like this. So this position will end up up here as well. And now I've got double the exposure and some locked in profit. Okay, so that's what it will look like but don't worry again if this is if this is too much to to deal with you will get to see me do this in real time so just make sure you subscribe to the channel hit notifications and you can watch me do this and of course if we get rejected here as i've said we'll be flipping short on the whole position and looking for new lows then it's a rinse and repeat if we make it up to this line it's the exact same thing we'll add another we'll add another position move the stop of the whole lot up or if we get rejected here we'll flip the whole thing short and look to see what happens next and if if we can get above both of these lines then we will have built up one two and three long positions looking for new highs and we'll be in a very strong position then so we will see the nasdaq and the dow are similar stories i'm going to play the s p because i prefer to play the s p um the nasdaq will likely be the same the nasdaq and the dow will likely follow suit um the head and shoulders looks invalidated well not looks is invalidated so we can get rid of this, get rid of this measured move because this is no longer a head and shoulders as we took out the low. But again, similarly with the S&P, swing low, be looking for to run into some overhead resistance in the near future. Um, I'm going to be playing the S&P, so that's where my focus is going to be. Oil, lots of chop from oil. Again, I've said this before, I'll say it again. Um, there was probably a trade in here somewhere, but I don't have a good read on this and experience has taught me when I don't have a good read, just leave it alone. I have said that if we can roll over and get a big dip somewhere in this neighborhood, that's where I become interested in this as a, as a, as a long. Um, for now, I mean, this is really just chop, hasn't it? This is just chop sideways and sideways and sideways. I don't know. If you made money on this, good for you. But for me, I'm not really interested until until we can get a big dip here. If we can get a big dip here, then I think I understand what's going on. And I will notify you of that and let you know what I'm doing. Gold has moved into the danger zone for me. I've said this before that we might come down and get a test of this. And it looked like we did. Um, and I also said before that I cannot tolerate much time spent in here. So we're in here and we can come back out of here and then I don't have a problem with this. But for now, this is not looking good for gold. And and I really want to see some strength come in very soon for me to not be 
starting to get really worried about the price action of gold because this hanging around in here opens up a retest of the lows and possibly lower um if we get a if we were to get a big drop much much lower then i would be back in the truck up at this point um but for now in terms of leverage longs trading this is not a good look in my opinion and we really need to see some strength coming out of gold so i'll be keeping a close eye on that silver is about to break a downtrend i think i think the first thing to note is we have this going on this is going to act as big overhead resistance when the time comes eventually and in the short term we have got this that's a bit low so there'll be a trade here as and when silver breaks this line um easy long and i'll show you what i mean there's this breakout retest and go breakout retest and go breakout retest and go this was a good one i remember this okay so i don't really expect this one to behave any differently um i do think that we've we've come back down to the bottom of this range we've swept all the lows so any stop losses that were resting below this sort of area here they've all been run um i don't know when it's going to stop obviously nobody does i mean you'd think if we got all the way down to 18 and change then that would be an obvious bounce um but my plan for this is to wait for the break and we'll set up a long i think this is going to happen i think this could, could happen this week i don't know when i'm not going to pretend to know when nobody knows but that's the sort of thing I'll be looking at. Um, and when we get to here, it will be a case of do we close and flip short or can we crack this and then actually start a run? So we'll see. Um, Silver's going to follow gold, of course. Gold needs to really, really sort itself out. This could be a shakeout move. We can recover this and crack this trend line. That's ultra bullish. So we need to wait and see. But a little bit more patience with the metals. Silver possibly going to lead here. I would think this might break out before gold becomes tradable gold's not really tradable for me until we break this trend line on the outside here so this might end up coming down lower something like that yeah i don't know um but for me this is the this is the be all end all for my long entry for gold silver however i'll be happy to take a trade as we break this trend line i think this is overdone so we'll likely be able to repeat one of these processes here and these show up a few times a year so always good to try to capitalize on them as and when they come spend most of the year waiting for these sort of setups and we're right there now so that's good miners fallen off a cliff easy short entry once we flipped if you watched the prior technical analysis videos you'd have been there all the way through that um i'm no longer interested in in positions for this the short on the way down was great after we had the fake out and the breakdown of the trend line this is the same for junior miners um but for me they are sort of they're sort of unnecessary at the moment i know a lot of people like to trade these but for me this is just i don't know i don't need them um i'll use the long for silver and as i said i'll wait for the breakout of gold if it were to occur um if we hang around in here and set up for a short position i'll notify of that as and when i see it but for now i think this is just some some sort of shake out silver will be a tell if silver can break out you would expect that it would come off the back of gold recovering this perhaps so we'll continue to update make sure you tuned in subscribe notifications on if you want to see all of this so bitcoin is not looking too good to be honest it's going to do bitcoin things no doubt um for now we've swept this box come back and now we're sort of using it it looks like we might be flipping it into resistance maybe we're going to chop around here i absolutely would not be surprised to see a sweep of this low um now that we have this structure in play i wouldn't be surprised at all if we were to undercut this low one more time and that becomes the bottom um i also wouldn't be surprised if we see this sort of fractal play out wouldn't be surprised to see this play out where we just sort of chop sideways um and then we can go from here but that does mean short term more pain more boringness more choppiness more sideways action so for me it's not really a a leverage tradable product at the moment a break of this trend line and everything changes for me and i do still think i do still think that i, I can't i can't abandon my thesis to get this retrace up into this purple box maybe the retrace falls short and we don't get all the way up here but i do think that having had this much downside we are due to we are due to break this trend line at some point and we are due to have some level of of rally even if it's just a relief rally that forms a lower high i still think 
that we've got to be close to having some short-term relief. But for now, this is not in focus for me at the moment. This is just keep an eye on this and see what happens. I don't really foresee, um, I don't really foresee a big drop down to. I know a lot of people are calling for like six, ten k, twelve k. I I don't really believe that we're going to get that. To be honest, I think that's wishful thinking. I'm sure a lot of people would like to accumulate Bitcoin at fourteen k. Becomes a lot more feasible for a lot more people to own a whole Bitcoin down at that level. But I think this is why people are dreaming. I don't think people are going to let you know people accumulate bitcoin for 14k anymore i think those days are long gone and i think anyone wishing for sub 20 is somewhat living in la la land of course i could be wrong anything could happen looking at ethereum it looks pretty bad doesn't it, it looks like it's in a bit of a state there's overhead resistance all over the place um but what i'd like to remind you of is whilst this looks absolutely horrible with credit where credit is due this is blockchain backers work but this is the the fractal here in the blue is bitcoin from 2018 and you can see we're now we've we've come down to here and exceeded this low so we have exceeded the low this would be the low back here we have exceeded that so as of right now we're sort of trading down here um but if we could quickly wick up Monday, if particularly if the stock market can open strong, and as I've already shown you in my previous analysis, I think the stock market is at least due a bounce from here. So if we can recover back into here, I'd say this fractal is still in play, even though we exceeded the lows here. We did have a lot of panic for that. So I think that if, as long as we can wick back up into this range, this fractal is still in play, and that shows a retrace to around 4,000 US, which would be right around my purple box area after a couple of trend line breaks. So I do think this is in place still at the moment. Obviously, this will become invalidated very fast if we just take out this prior low. So we will see. But given that the S&P has put in has put in a swing low, all we need is a bit of follow through from this. And you would think that Bitcoin and Ethereum are going to follow suit. And therefore, we would be able to recover into this area and we would be able to move up here break our trend line and move into this 4000 range so as with bitcoin not for me not tradable especially with leverage at the moment but will quickly become tradable if we can get an entry above this trend line break and lastly i want to take a look at the us government bonds the 10 year we have had a in my opinion a significant trend line break so are we going to get a retest like this something like this and a rejection off of here is that what we're going to get something like this if so, then you know what's going to happen to gold. You know what's going to happen to everything else. So the stars are aligning. The stars are aligning for a rejection here of the bonds for a break of the parabola on the dollar and for a near-term bounce, at least, from equity markets. Um, there's very clear invalidation here. If we take out these lows, I would say watch out for traps on bitcoin because i could easily see this sweeping the lows and then recovering to break this trend line and moving up very very quickly that would really get a lot of people super bearish only to lock them out and the recovery for bitcoin can be incredibly sharp out of these cycle lows like this you know you really don't have much time to react before you get locked out so just be aware of that let's hope that gold can reclaim this area keep bullish and work on a breakout I'm sure silver is going to give a trade very soon, so I will update on that as with the S&P. I'll add a little five minute chart section into every video at least and make sure I update on the positions as I as I accumulate them and as I start to trade them. I like to play super, super patient and come out of a position of power and I will continue to do this. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe, make sure you check back, turn the notifications on and watch me deal with these wild markets in real time if you found value here today subscribe to the channel drop a like on it share it around and until next time i'm your boy camel take care